again. It's good to be back with you. I've got a dynamics problem today, and more than just solving the dynamics problem itself, I want to talk a little bit about a general procedure for solving uh, simple dynamics problems. That's one where, ones where you've got acceleration in a straight line. Okay, and I'm going to base this on a problem I just assigned my students the other day. So let's say we've got an elevator. Maybe it's a freight elevator, and it's designed to move big uh, objects, big payloads, up and down in a building. Okay. Well, let's say the elevator is, they're basically big boxes, and it's got a cable pulling up on it. It has a tension T in the cable, easy to imagine. Well, the structure of the elevator itself might be fairly substantial since it's designed to be used pretty hard. So we'll call that 300 kilograms. And there's a payload in here of 500 kilograms. The uh, elevator's not worth much if it can't haul something, so we've got that. Now, elevators travel up and down on rails, and the rails are usually pretty well lubricated, and they've got bearings and things, but the friction's not zero, and let's, let's account for that. Let's say there's rails on one side of it. I suspect there's maybe rails on both sides, but it doesn't really matter. And that the friction force, F sub F, is, let me make sure I get this right, 150 newtons, okay? Eh, it's, it's, it's enough to notice, but not, not a lot, okay? So we're given all this stuff here, all right, we know acceleration, the desired acceleration is 3 meters per second squared, yeah, about a third of a G, enough to get moving, but not so much that you're like pinned to the floor, that's not good, okay? So we know the acceleration, we know the masses, and we know that we've got this little bit of additional friction. Let's find tension in the cable. And that's tension in the cable, so that's T. All right, now, before we go start crunching numbers here, let's talk a little bit about the procedure for solving a problem like this. The very first thing, I'll call maybe process. Engineers, engineering technology people, we're process people. We need to know the process for things so we can work through problems and get the right answer every time. So the very first thing to do is obviously draw a picture. And I'm not talking about a free body diagram. I'm just talking a picture of what's going on. This is the picture of what's going on, right? If you can't draw a picture of the problem, you probably don't understand it. Or if you find yourself trying to go through a problem without drawing a picture, you better ask yourself, self, why am I draw not drawing a picture of this? Right? So number two, now we're going to draw a very specific picture. Draw a free body diagram. Okay? So we're looking for external forces now. We're looking for forces acting on the body in question, which for us is just an elevator. So the next thing we're going to do after that is we're going to write equations of motion, make one equation of motion, and there's, there's two ways to do this. One is to use Newton's law, and the other one is to use a variation of Newton's law that incorporates something called inertial force. I'll talk about both of those here in a second. And the last thing, finally, is solve. Solve for whatever it is you're trying to find, okay? In this case, we're going to solve for T. In this case, find T. Okay, so there's the process. It takes place, it goes in four steps, and most of the time, unless you've got a really odd problem, that's about what you're going to do. So let's draw the free body diagram. I've got a little room right there. Can I get that in frame? Sure, we can put that in. So let's draw the free body diagram. And there's just a box, that's just the elevator, okay? So we've got tension going up, right? We've got friction force going down, and we have weight going down, right? That, the, the cable feels that weight whether it's accelerating or not, so we've got to take that into account. Well, we don't know what that is. That one's 150 newtons, and the weight is going to be the mass of the elevator plus the mass of the uh, payload times the acceleration of gravity. So it's going to be 300, 500, that's 800 kilograms times 9.81 meters per second squared. Okay, let me make sure I get the right number here. That turns out to be 7845.3. So that's 7845.3, and that's in newtons. Kilogram, meter per second squared, that's a newton. So that right there is going to be 7845.3 newtons. So those are, my ex those are the forces acting on this elevator, okay? 
What I'm not taking into account here is the reaction due to acceleration. Sometimes we call that inertial force. Now there's a debate about whether inertial force is really a force. Technically speaking, it's not, but it has the units of force, and when we treat it like a force under the appropriate circumstances, we'll get the right answer. So I'll show you both of those here. So let's get that out of the way. Okay, there's my, there's my uh, free body diagram. I've drawn that picture. Next thing to do is write an equation of motion. Well, now that I got the free body diagram, I don't really need this anymore, so I'm going to erase that. Clear out some room here. Okay, so write the equations of motion. First way to do it, the way that we is normally taught, is to use, uh, let's see, equations, equation of motion. Okay? Well, the way we all know how to do this, or we've all seen perhaps, is, whoops, that's a terrible sigma. Let's try this again. All right, sum of the external forces in the y direction equals ma. That's f equals ma. That's Newton's law. Well, I'm going to need a direction, aren't I? So I'm going to call, just arbitrarily, I'm going to call that y positive is up. Okay, I could just as well call it y positive down if I want. All right, but I'm going to call it up. So tension is positive. Friction force is negative. It acts against the, it acts in the negative direction. So does weight. So let's see. There's my friction force minus my weight equals m a. All right. So no problem here. Um, I know all those things except that. All right. So what I've got here is, think about this as a as an extension of perhaps a statics problem. When you do a statics problem, some of the forces equal zero because if they're not your body's moving. The object in question is moving. Well, it's moving. We know it's moving. We want it to move. We want it to accelerate. So rather than the sum of our forces equals zero, we'll use Newton's law and say sum of the forces equals ma. In fact, if there's no acceleration, then it really is zero. Okay? So if you want to think about it that way, equation of static equilibrium is just an extension of that or a special case of that where a is zero. So I've got all these forces acting here. All right. So I want to solve for t. Let's just put that on one side of the equal sign. So we'll put all the things we don't know on one side of the equal sign and all the things we do know on the other side. We know all these things. That stuff's all known. That's the thing we don't know. Well, let's just start plugging numbers in. 150 newtons for the tension plus, what is it, 78.45.3 newtons for the weight plus Mass now is 800 kilograms times our acceleration, which is now we know is 3 uh, meters per second squared. Let me get rid of that. So the units are all going to work out. Newtons, newtons, kilogram meters per second squared. That's a newton. And when I crank all that out, I get 10,395 newtons. That's the tension in my rope. Okay, so I've now done that. I've gone through all four steps. What I want to do now is show you what this would look like if I used um, inertial force. So I'm going to erase my process here since we know what that is. Let me get out of, my, out of the way one more time in case you want to do a screenshot or something. We will already draw the picture. We'll already have the free body diagram. I'm going to write the equation of motion using inertial force. And what we're going to find out is it looks exactly like that. Alright, so let's, there, I'll leave this up here so we see how that works. Now, if I want to use inertial force, okay, idea here is that if I look at the right side of Newton's law here, get my head out of the way, ma, ma, kilogram meters per second squared, that's Newton's. This has units of force. Is it really an applied force? No, it's an, an effective force that comes from acceleration. So if you want to consider it a force, when you sum the forces, you can now set the sum of the forces equal to zero if one of them is an inertial force. An inertial force acts in the opposite direction of acceleration. Okay, so acts in opposite direction of acceleration. Okay, so if I were going to put inertial force in here, I'd add one more force down there, and that would be ma. 
Okay? Acceleration is up, inertial force must be down. So now let's sum the forces in the y direction equals zero, true as long as inertial force is included. And I'm sorry to write this here, take too long. As long as inertial force is included, you can get away with this. It's actually a pretty good way to do things because if you use inertial force, even though this isn't technically a force, it's got the units of force and you use it like a force, treat it as a force, you get the right answer. Now, dynamics problems, just like statics problems, you're summing the forces and they are equal to zero. Okay, I can do that. So I have T minus one fifth, well here I'm gonna, rather than numbers, I'll use symbols. T minus friction force minus the weight, uh, let's see, T, friction force, weight, minus the inertial force, MA, and that has to equal zero. Okay, that's my inertial force. So it's a very simple step to say that T equals F friction plus W plus MA. Well, that equation right there sure looks an awful lot like that one right there. I get the exact same equation using inertial force as I do Newton's use, using Newton's laws. They're equivalent to one another. They give you the same answer, and as long as you apply the inertial force idea correctly, it'll work just fine. Okay, but more important, let's review the process. Draw a picture. I've erased my picture, but we had it. If you're not drawing a picture, you're, you might have a much higher chance of making a mistake. Then draw your free body diagram to identify all your forces. Then, write out your equations of motion using either this process or this one. They're mathematically equivalent. Once you've done that, find the, the quantity you need to solve for. In our case, it was tension. Solve for that, and then you're done. I hope this helps, and I'll see you next time.